to hell. No, they already no, know. No, they don't, okay? They don't know anything for sure. Well, they will. They'll find out. You know that. The Motel Life is the kind of film that I grew up and still love to watch, which is just movies that are really emotional and that can bring you to an emotional place where you have these epiphanies or realizations about family or love or humanity or things like this. And I think that that's something that is a very strong quality that the film has. And that's why it's the kind of movie that after you see, you hold on to. I think it's a world in which you don't see every day, and I think that at the same time, about the strongest foundation, which is, you know, between two brothers, you know, a love between two brothers that's incredibly fulfilled in a lot of different ways, but it is a drama at the end of the day. It's an emotional movie. I just wish it was me instead of that kid, Annie. I do. I was really excited to work with Emil. He was an actor that I'd met years before when he was young. He kind of reminded me of me. I think I even told you at a party that I was going to play your brother one day <laughs> yeah. or something, which is kind of strange. He probably was like, God, that guy, Stephen Dorff's a freak. I had met Stephen over 10 years ago, and we immediately clicked and got along. To me, it was just something that happened naturally. I mean, we just got along really well, and we were in a really fun city of Reno, and, you know, we would go out and maybe hit a casino or hit a bar. I have to be the older brother and watch out for him with his gambling. Uh, yeah, I'm not the best blackjack, blackjack player. You're not a loser, kid. But if you keep acting like one, then I don't know. Chris is awesome. I mean, he's just an iconic, legendary guy. And so, you know, those kind of guys, when they come in, they can almost just stand there and, and be great. He's a very in-the-moment kind of actor. And I think he's really good at just kind of bringing that essential honesty of who he is. Can you at least just tell me a story like the ones you told Jerry? Dakota is an actress who I've admired for a really long time and was really thrilled that she could be a part of the film and, and work with her. And she was just really funny and really sweet and just kind of supernaturally talented. So you guys on vacation? No. No, it's uh, nothing like that. I think that the animation interludes of the film with Frank's story voiceovers are really important because they offer an escape for Frank and Jerry Lee. And it's this kind of world that they're able to kind of flourish in and explore and release all of their problems and all of their trials and tribulations in different ways. There was something about the idea that these two directors are brothers and they understand that bond of brotherhood. You know, I thought they would be able to really bring something to the project emotionally as directors because of that.